Hello. And this is it. The last lab recording. Uh, and what if everything you've learned, not just from me, but everything you've learned is actually boron and sulfur. It's what a chemist would say. Your belief system. It's that time of year. What if everything you've learned is Brussels sprouts? Which Brussels sprout are you? Which Brussels sprout would you like to be? Also could be what it all was for the bachelors of science. That's me. Mine's from the Nittany Lions. Well, we're going to walk through three myths that I have perpetually taught you this term. Myth number one. Well, this is the chemistry myth. What if only matter matters from day one? Reality is located in the tangible structure of matter. Matter is measured, qualified, and analyzed, right? From our first, that first video I made for you on atomic structure. So Aristotle's empirical materialism, matter is fixed and unchanging and therefore real. And then Descartes ushered in the scientific revolution, introducing analytical, reductive reasoning. All science is certain, evident knowledge. We reject all knowledge, which is merely probable. And so you've all, whether you know who Descartes is, the Cartesian coordinates, those X, Y axes, which eventually became X, Y, and Z, but he was all about dualism, right and wrong, X and Y. And it leads to the mechanistic universe. So yeah, the world can be understood through the knowledge of its physical parts. So Sir Isaac Newton, of course, with all of his wonderful laws, and what most people don't know, he is most famous for his writings on physics and optics, but most of his writings, over half of them, um, are actually on alchemy and trying to figure out how to, I think he was working on the Philosopher's Stone, changing lead into gold. And actually another large majority was theology. He was actually very religious. Um, he lived on a farm and when the plague happened, he retreated to his farm and that's when he started writing. He sat there under, watched an apple falling because couldn't go anywhere else. All right, the laws of nature he creates, materialism, and that's this time of year, we all fall into this materialistic world, mechanistic universe. So the clock is known as the Newton clock. So how comfortable are you really with the mechanistic universe? Which leads into myth number two, determinism, which, yeah, the cause and effect chemistry, chemical reactions, everything that we've talked about for the past month. Le Chatelier's, for every action produces a reaction, right? This, the balance has to be maintained. So we can predict and control the outcome of nature. We have a pill for that, don't worry. Or, right, do your genes really determine who you are? And myth number three, reductionism. Need I say more? <laughs> Chemistry and reductionism. So this is an article from the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, many of you are going into health and we are all, this is interesting because it's from three years ago. And there they're looking at tuberculosis and where we went from looking the person is ill to the organ to what's the bacteria that creates it, the microbe, and eventually to the molecular level. And that's what we've done in a much more accelerated um, pattern with this, uh, with the coronavirus. And again, we've got a pill for that. So which one is chemistry? So back to this slide in the spider's web. A micrometer thickness, micron. A carbon atom is an angstrom. So 7,000 carbon atoms span a single strand of a spider's web. Wow. So is that reductionism? We're reducing the spider's web? 
the majesty, the artwork, to how many atoms? Is it determinism? Is it materialism? Right? We can then figure out what makes up the spider's web, determine the molecules. Periodic table, reduce everything to these elements. Matter is built from these building blocks. Um, they're called elements because they're the elements, right? Um, and cause and effect chemical reactions. Atomic theory, we reduced to be made of atoms or is there much more going on? And if you've known me a little bit, you knew I was going somewhere with this. Is it in your genes? Can we be healed by molecular robots replacing the defective genes? Is that materialism, determinism, reductionism? Is your DNA your karma? Well, the thing that's interesting about being human, only 2% of our DNA codes for proteins. 98% of our DNA is a vibrational pattern. That's not true for any other species. Only 2% of ours actually codes for proteins. It's not the karma, it's the driver. You are the driver. That's a quote from Dr. Bruce Lipton, as is the three myths uh, from an amazing book I read by him. And uh, if you take my Chem 106 class, I talk about him quite frequently. Um, your perception of any given thing at any given moment can influence your brain chemistry, which in turn affects the environment where your cells reside and controls their fate. We're going to take it one step further than Dr. Bruce. Dr. Bruce, by the way, is um, there's a journal from Japan that comes out every year with the 100 most spiritual people on the planet, the Dalai Lama. Bruce gets on there every year, too. He's actually an electron microscope guy. PhD, um, and suddenly one day he had an epiphany, and uh, he was always crabby and grumpy. He talks about it, and you never see him not smiling. He's always smiling. You are the conductor of your molecular symphony. That's me conducting. Um, so you create. Is this in your greens? I like this one better. We talked about this with the acidosis and alkalosis. You are what you eat, right? So being the conductor of your genetic symphony comes from this book, which is the genie in our genes, uh, our external environment, our diet, our friends, our support system, and our internal milieu. Actually something, if you're not aware of, that Louis Pasteur on his deathbed said, so Louis Pasteur took us down this road that microbes determine disease. And at the same time, there was another guy who said, no, it's determined by what's going on inside of you, if you can be infected. And Louis Pasteur on his deathbed commented, the other guy is right. Meaning it's not just the disease. Why do some people get sick? We all can walk, whether it's a coronavirus or something else, and you can, Florence Nightingale, she walked and she treated people during the um, hundred years ago, during the flu epidemic, and she never got it. Why? Because her belief system, every thought, feeling, and intention, intention, our beliefs, our faith, our view of God, that one's huge. People who view God as vindictive, they tend to get much sicker. People who view God for the love and light and joy that, God is, do much better. And the memories we associate with each belief, the tools of our consciousness, each releases a particular cascade of biochemicals. Our bodies respond with a complex array of shifts. Oh, anybody thinking of Le Chatelier here? Yeah. But which came first? It's all of this, our beliefs and our support which so many of you wrote about in your gratitude, how important your support is. If you didn't notice, it's not, it's support of your diet and of your support system and you being support. So Dawson Church, another man who talks about how he smile, he, he does now, he smiles, he's actually a psychologist uh, and the importance of our genes, that our gene, our, the, the lack of importance, the overemphasis on our genes, that it's our attitude and feelings. Um, 
that determine our characteristics. That we are a system of cooperation. Our body doesn't make a moral judgment about our feelings. Only a scarecrow can know this. It just responds. Our body cannot tell the difference between a real versus a perceived imagined threat. We are the only species that can create in our brains, in our thoughts, and go through a stress response that is not even there. And we also have the choice to instead choose the healing response, a conscious choice. So choose love and choose joy. It's a metamorphosis. It is always a choice. That's me playing with the fairies in the redwoods a couple years ago on Thanksgiving, actually, three years ago. Um, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about here came from this amazing book. I actually never finished it. I passed it on to somebody uh, back in March, the last time I saw it. Um, so Spontaneous Evolutions, this is by Dr. Bruce Lipton. Um, he talked about the three myths. And yeah, we're in a metamorphosis now. You always have a choice. I had a crazy yoga teacher. And the reason I kept going to him is because one day he said this. He said, in every moment, there are millions of potentials. Millions of potentials. Find the most loving potential and follow that. One of the best pieces of advice I can pass on. And what about the placebo effect? I kept this slide in here because it's a slide that everyone always really hits them. So you've all heard of the placebo, and these are some stats from it. Uh, the one over the top right about anti-depression trials, uh, 50 to 75% include placebo. There's something called the um, file cabinet trials, which never get published because the placebo does as well or actually better. And so these numbers are actually much higher than what they show here. Um, and there's also another one that Deepak Chopra talks about. 95% of illness, and it's probably actually more like 98%, is inflammatory. It's not caused by your genes. It's not predetermined. It's inflammatory. Something to think about. This is just a cute cartoon. So the knee surgery, the guy did knee surgery and the other people he just pretended to. So they went through the whole operation, but they never actually cut them. Yeah. So that's why the guy, my knee feels like new. They saw absolutely no difference in the recovery. By the way, for contraception though, it doesn't work as well. So at the bottom, it talks about the nocebo. And I wanna mention that because most people have heard about the placebo effect. The nocebo is where somebody tells you. So I can't remember how long ago this was, um, but it was a man, Apparently this comes from, um, was a doctor in Virginia and he had a patient who had cancer. They treated it, he got better. And then he came back in, he had a cough and the doctor said, the cancer's back. You're going to die within two months. The guy died two days later. They did an autopsy, absolutely clean. There was no cancer. And the doctor realized, oh my goodness, my words killed this man. Think about the words that have been thrown around out there to all of us for the past year. Um, so I have a teacher, my Qigong teacher from China, and she actually had terminal cancer. She had stage four breast cancer and spread throughout her body. She did not know that. She knew she had cancer. She was going in for treatment. But in China at that time, this is in the 80s, they did not tell you how ill you were. Um, family knew, but nobody would ever tell the patient. And one day a man came in, she said, what are you doing here? This is a place for sick people. And he said, you need to come with me. And he took her to the park and she learned Qigong uh, and she's still alive. That was 50 years ago. Um, she's in her nineties. She lives down in California now. And so I was blessed back 25 years ago to learn Qigong from her. And I do it every day, multiple times in the day. And yeah, this is a book. I have not had the opportunity to read it, um, but Dr. Joe Dispenza, 
highly recommend his stuff. He has a elaborate stuff on YouTube um, and amazing meditations and that you create your reality. He also is somebody who had uh, an accident and healed himself. Um, all right, this is one of my favorite studies I've read. So there's this place at Stanford called the Heart Math Institute. And it has studied the connection between the heart and the mind. Yes, Stanford. And so they hook these people up to an EEG, which is to their brain. And by the way, they don't have to hook it to your brain. It's actually, they do a magnetic thing now and they can hook it several inches outside of you. That's how far these fields are. And an EKG, so the heart monitor. Uh, and they also put dermal sensors, so skin sensors. And they have the subject stare at a blank computer screen. And every few seconds, an image would appear and they would read um, the brain response, the heart response, the skin response. So there were two different types of pictures and they were randomized. So either emotionally arousing pictures of autopsies, of, of sex, of violence, or calming pictures of nature and people smiling. That's my Joey. Um, and they measured the response. And what do you think? Who was the first responder? It's pretty obvious, right? Your heart. Before any brain activity, the heart had responded. There's more. Both the heart and the brain responded before any image was on the screen. Before there was even an image, the heart responded. How did it know? And the brain responded to the heart. Did you know 95% of the neurological pathways between your heart and brain, 95% of them are from your heart to your brain, sending messages to your brain. This is where it's really cool. The heart and the brain responded before the image generator had actually randomly generated the image at all. Who's in control here? Of course, the heart and the brain responded before the computer made a choice and presented the image. And then the body responded once the image was there. So that was the um, skin response. So heart mind coherence. You can tell which side. Coherence means um, they're in sync. So the green one over on the right is in sync. And that's what we want all of our heart and mind to be in coherence, sending messages. You know when you're in that state. You've all been there and everything's just flowing. And you know when you're in that stress state and things are not flowing. You're like the red one over here. So it's a fluid state of awareness. Prayer and meditation. You, most of you did gratitude, uh, prayer, meditation, and you felt that. It takes a couple days. Keep it up. It was the only labs that had importance. It's an inner state of ease and focus on now, on this moment. Because now is the only moment there is. There is, though, something called heartbeat variability. So, there we go. So the incoherence is something else. Frustration, anxiety, you get this crazy rhythm, and then appreciation, gratitude. But if you look at the appreciation one, they're not all exactly the same, and that's important. The more variability you have, the more adaptable you are. And so we all know somebody who is stuck. They're stuck in a pattern, and that's because they have no variability. more adaptable, more open heart. Heart intelligence is fast. Our heart is our magnetic center. So the chakras, the seven chakras, the heart is the middle. It is um, what the human experience is. There is no ego, no frustration, no self-worth, just love. That is why prayer, people put their hands in front of their heart in every culture uh, or put their hands on their heart. It's a hotline to our subconscious, right? There's the whole thing. Intuition is from the heart. It's our connections to other. It's why, so for Huda, um, you're going to know when Yosef, you're going to know when Yosef's coming. Um, but for parents, all of you who are parents, 
and will be parents. You just know, and all of you who are children, which is all of us, you know when your parents need you and then when they're small children, when your children need you before they, you hear with your ears. So from love springs energy and matter and thus all possibilities. Yes, this is where your electrons come from. Make them come from love. So are you just molecular chemical factories limited to cause and effect chemical reactions and interactions? Because we have a pill for that. Or are we something much more? The quantum communication. That's me up in the San Juan several spring breaks ago. Matter, electron, moving around matter. Uh, the nucleus. It's mostly empty space. There's like 18, 19 nines of emptiness. Is it empty? Because in that emptiness is where everything is happening. The quantum and atom in that space is the pulsing energy, the filled potential where belief and intention come from. Look, I actually have a reference. Um, that is where everything's happening, where the matter is not. But chemists can't let go of materialism, right? When we define the quantum model, we have to suddenly say it's a quantum mechanical model because we're so afraid of that. Now, this is a picture from the Hubble telescope, and you're all familiar with it. When you go out and look at the stars at night, it shows separate stars. Are you comfortable with what I've taught you about discrete particles to explain your existence from ions and atoms and molecules? Oh, my. To two trillion galaxies of stars in a tablespoon of water. Yes, Avogadro's number, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That's how many galaxies of stars. Because there's only a couple billion stars in any galaxy. In a tablespoon of water, which you can hold in the palm of your hand, go do it. Stop me right now. Go measure a tablespoon of water and put it in the palm of your hand and stare at that. That is Avogadro's number of water molecules. That's how many galaxies of stars would have to have to get to that number. So are we separate discrete particles? That is a picture from another telescope, the Chandra telescope. Are we all actually energetically connected? Same direction. One shows separate stars and the other shows that all the stars out there. When you go out tonight and look at the stars, because we are blessed with the east wind, which means clear nights, look at the stars different. Don't see them as separate and don't see yourself as separate. Oh, can't go through the vortex again. So, right, are you all separate or is your DNA? There is actually a rhythm to it, that 98%. Can we reprogram our DNA and heal ourselves? Can meditation change your DNA? It is a symphony and you are the conductor of your symphony. Remember, the biggest change of all, beyond diet, best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service to others. The study I talked about of depression in the U.S. and China, that they told these people for three months, go and do what you feel good, what makes you feel good. And the people in China got better, but the people in the U.S. did not because the people in the U.S. went shopping. They did self-help. They did everything about themselves. And the people in China did stuff to make others feel healthy, happy. So it's not giggling until you wiggle, it's giggling until the others wiggle and giggle. It's expressing gratitude to others. I'm so impressed and inspired by all of your stories over the term, from meditation to the gratitude, to the giggles, to the healthy changes. So we are made up of, going back to matter, right? 85% of us, 80% of us is water. And so this is a gentleman in Japan for several decades has been doing these water crystals. If you've never seen them, you can Google them. Um, so certain words, whether they said it or just wrote on them. Um, and then words, of course, that were not so kind. And they could not get water crystals to form for the unkind ones. But for the kind words, compassion, wow. Uh, and love is that lower corner one down there. 
Um, so it's the vibes. It's all in the vibes. Calorie counting doesn't matter. Eating real food, which has real vibes. This ultra processing of food, there's no vibes. So whether it's the singing bowls, whether it's, that's why certain music calms all of us. Um, that's just meditation I started doing with, I learned on my own, um, giggling has vibes. So optimize your quantum potential, right? Every cell in your body vibrates, is created by those vibrations. And if you vibrate with love, with joy, with energy and health, you will heal. And you will just radiate that healing love. We're not just beings of matter. We are actually energetic beings. And so, yeah, you don't have a picture of me dancing behind there because I would have fallen on my face. That's me conducting my children. Um, it's Kaylee, you may have been there. So let your electrons dance with your awareness because that's what they are. So I'll ask you again, are you comfortable with discrete particles to explain your existence from cations to anions? You know, and the final's coming up. You get dressed as your favorite part of the term. From red to blue oxes. From molecules binding receptors. That's what I get to do in my whole Chem 105 and 106. Is perpetuate this myth more. It's so wonderful. From diet to drugs. From acidosis to alkalosis. Are you your pH level? Or is it the earth, water, air, and fire? Fire is a transformative part. So I have to ask you, how comfortable are you with the intangible waves, quantum entanglement, string theory, with infinite potential of giggles and jiggles and wiggles, with butterfly entropy, electromagnetic signaling, consciousness, energy healing, and miracles. So we're in that time of year. So give yourself the space when you wake up in the morning. Don't be this guy. And yeah, I can hear some of you send me an email going, you know what? I am that guy. Or I was that guy. That's what I want to hear. You are not this person anymore. You don't wake up or go to bed staring at your phone, having to look. Wake up with gratitude. Wake up. First thing when you wake up, before you grab your phone, place your hands on your heart and just say thank you. Thank you. Like you get blessed like me to wake up with a tiny little forever puppy. If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. When they interviewed these uh, lamas far in the monasteries in Tibet and they asked them, what are you chanting? Uh, they just say compassion. That's it. They're sending out compassion to this planet that simple not yeah compassion means co together and passion i feel you happiness is making others easier so almost the end did you know this is really cool to me the earth's magnetic resonance is the same frequency as our heart rhythms and brain waves so that's me doing my qigong when I'm doing my Qigong, this is what I see. And so I'm just butterflies and flowers and sending out those wishes to each of you. You're all so dear to me and absolutely love you all. Um, with love, all things are possible. Upgrade your belief system. So I'll ask again what you need to do. You just write to me two things from this video that really struck you can also say what's something you did this term maybe it was a change that happened a lot of you have talked about and so what is your boron sulfur again many many blessings you're all wonderful thank you and good day